just where the path goes. But we're coming home to who we are. Thanks for your love, but I don't need your worry. If you think you know what's better for me, it's good to learn to trust my Good evening, everyone. Welcome to New Chapters, an evening to better find footsteps. My name is Luzer Tversky. Get over it. Anyway, you may recognize me from the other, larger screen in your house. Maybe you saw an Orthodox on Netflix, and then the algorithm recommended you watch a documentary, One of Us. I'd like to extend my thanks to the algorithm. If you're still in the community and watching from a secret smartphone in the bathroom, hi, Shloimi. Okay. Now, let me tell you why I'm here, talking to you today, when I have absolutely nowhere else to be. I'm here to tell you a story. The year was 2009, and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. I had left my wife, my family, and my 11 siblings far behind. And all I had left was a Hyundai Sonata, which, by the way, was what I was living in. And it's just been repossessed from outside the footsteps office. I went upstairs to the office and looked around. To the left was a 20-something with payas tucked behind his ears, studying for his high school diploma. Next to him was someone doing something, something financial on something, Excel spreadsheet, something. I don't know. Maybe you got UB encounters amongst you go understand what he was doing. I don't know. So I'm standing there, my life completely shattered, my last possession is gone, with no hope or plan. 
and it hit me. Where I come from, no one ever questions what they're going to do with their lives because they already know. But at this moment, I had no idea where my life was taking me. And I realized, this is awesome. I could be anything I want. And if there's anything that can sum up the work of footsteps, it is that moment. It was then, surrounded by others in my situation, relentlessly pursuing their own dreams, that I realized that I can pursue my own dream. I just needed one. And look at me now, right? Yeah, I'm just going to let that awkwardly hang for a second while I fix my ear pods. Anyway, so how does Footsteps do it? Footsteps provides social, emotional, educational, and vocational support for those breaking away from the ultra-Orthodox community. Almost the same as any immigrant or refugee might need in their new home after having fled. Some of us don't speak English very well or at all. Most of all, Footsteps is one of the only organizations that is providing care and shining a spotlight on this uniquely creative, ambitious, and often neglected portion of the Jewish population. Footsteps provides a community that accepts us for wherever we want to be in our lives and helps us reach our fullest potential. And Footsteps is able to do that because of you. So I want to thank each and every one of you, new friends and old, for being here or there this evening and supporting this life-changing work. Tonight, we celebrate new chapters, something I think all of us are familiar with as we re-emerge from isolation and re-engage with each other, something that footsteppers know a thing or two about. And since this is our first ever virtual gala, it's fitting that I mention how many of us came to this organization through a screen. In fact, for many of us footsteppers, the first glimpse of a world outside of our community walls was through a screen. So it may seem like a less than ideal way to host an event. Being virtual is actually a reminder that the world opened up for many of us through technology, and the virtual world was actually a lifeline. We have a goal this evening of raising $50,000 so we can continue to extend this lifeline to our growing community. Listen to the stories you will hear tonight. And if any of these stories move you, please consider giving a gift that will help us reach that goal. At any time this evening, you can text the word footsteps to the number 44321. Anyway, we have an inspiring evening ahead. That's what it says on my teleprompter. I don't know that for a fact, with a few surprises along the way. According to my neuroses, one of those surprises will come to me and it will be an unwelcome one. Maybe my homemade teleprompter will break. Well, I guess that won't be a surprise. After all, it is a $7 picture frame I got at the dollar store and it's attached to my tripod with a spare shoelace. But anyway, enough about me. Tonight, we're here to honor several individuals who have shaped and lifted up this organization for more than a decade. Deborah Fine, Ellie Gordis, and Adina Cadden. They have seen this organization through so many ups and downs, including the hardest stretch of last year. And you'll hear from several members who you might know. And finally, we have special appearances from our friends Mandy Patinkin and Catherine Grody. So, stick around for that. Now, we would like to present to you our first honoree of this evening, the highly esteemed Deborah Fine. And here to tell you a little bit about Deborah is Hani Getter. Now, Hani is many things. A spiritual counselor, motivational speaker, senior director of organizing here at Footsteps, and a social worker. In fact, she was once my therapist. She tried. No, she, she really did. But she couldn't get me to shut up until now. Take it away, honey. Thank you, loser. So good to see you here. For those of you who know Deborah, it will not come as a surprise that she really didn't want to be honored here. But we at Footsteps felt that it was important to recognize the incredible amount she has given to this organization. Personally, I'm so grateful to be introducing you as our 2021 Footsteps honoree. You always took an interest in me 
and in staff, especially those of us with lived experience. You checked in on me when you knew things were going on with me personally, and I know that it that you did that for others as well, and not just for me. You care, and that comes through. You are a strategic thought partner, a visionary. In partnership with Lani, you have helped professionalize and grow footsteps to who we are today. Deborah always put social justice first. She sees our members as those in her backyard and is passionate to create change. Wow. That was incredibly moving, Hani. Uh, thank you. Um, I know that many of you have seen Hani featured in the Netflix documentary, One of Us. Her empathy, compassion, and warmth that come off on the screen are also on display every single day in her work at Footsteps, and she's an inspiration to me. And thanks to all of you for being here tonight and supporting Footsteps. It's so much fun being honored with my fellow board members, Ellie and Adina. Both of you have been my teachers and are my friends. So we've all spent chunks of the past year having long overdue discussions about poverty and inequality laid bare by COVID and by police misconduct. Every day at Footsteps, we see poverty and inequality, and it doesn't stem from a pandemic. Instead, it's perpetuated by some community leaders who believe that their truth is the only truth, and it's sustained by politicians and judges who turn a blind eye for votes. We live in a country that's organized under a constitution that grants basic rights to everyone. So it's both astounding and somewhat preposterous to me that when people choose to leave ultra-Orthodoxy, they're denied their community, they're denied custody of their kids, and they're denied the ability to go to college and get a job because they are not taught math, science, or English in tax-supported and barely regulated yeshivas. Every day, Footsteps simply tries to help people who chose a different path. We fix the unfair hand Footsteppers have been dealt every single day. At Footsteps, we celebrate freedom, we celebrate free will, and we celebrate the bravery of our members. Every single person on this Zoom this evening is helping Footsteps members get an education, get a job, maintain custody, and most importantly, connect with a community of peers for support and for love. Thank you all so much. Hi, my name is Adina Cadden. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I lived in New York for about 14 years and I am a active and involved Footsteps member for a long time. I found Footsteps when Footsteps was about six months old. It was the spring of 2005. Um, at that point, I had been OTD, as they say, um, for a long time, but I had never actually met anybody else that was also OTD. In many ways, my life was proceeding in a really positive way. I had finished grad school. I was living on my own in an apartment in New York, very independent. So many pieces of my life were falling into place, and yet I was a bit of a train wreck on the inside. I was struggling on so many levels in so many ways. I knew where I was, I knew where I wanted to get to, and I just didn't have the roadmap on how to get there. And someone recommended that I reach out and contact Malki. It was just a first name, no last name. And she had recently founded an organization called Footsteps. And it was recommended that maybe I reach out and see if she had anything to offer. I was very nervous to do so. And with trepidation, I called her. And we set up a meeting. Um, at that point, she did not have an office. It was, um, the whole organization was Malki on her cell phone on her living room couch. And so we set up a meeting um, in Washington Square Park and we met. And I ended up speaking with her and actually telling her sort of my life story and about my journey out on my own, which was an incredibly 
lonely journey. Um, it was an earth-shattering experience for me talking with her. I had never actually spoken my story out loud. Um, and with someone who actually understood it because she had lived a similar experience to mine. Um, it felt like the whole world shifted on its axis on that moment for me. Um, she then invited me to attend the one and only program that Footsteps had going at that point. And it was a group of people who'd all left the Orthodox world and were living their independent, self-determined lives, so we're trying to. Attending that first meeting, I didn't say a word. I just found myself nodding my head the entire time because everything everybody said, I had experienced. I had lived it. I, it was just absolutely earth shattering for me. And Footsteps was the only thing in the world that existed that allowed me to have that contact and connection. It wasn't important where we were. What was important was that we were there together. We were all sharing, growing, learning, and supporting each other. Um, to be able to come into a room like that and say, hey, I just went through this experience and I'm kind of shattered by it. What do I do now? And have other people be like, yeah, I had that the other day and this is what I did, or this is how I handled it, or look out for these pitfalls. We approached Maki, this other footstepper and I, to say, can we do just a social thing? Like, can we throw a party? And she said, sure, go ahead. And we ended up planning what became the Winter Party, which was a program that got repeated for years afterward. It was held around Hanukkah, Christmas, New Year's sort of thing, and in a lot of debate about what to call the party and what was it celebrating. And um, we ended up pulling in about 100 people and we had never had an event with 100 people. A drop-in group might have hit 15, 20 people at a time at the, in those days, and suddenly people came out of the woodwork for a social event, and we had, it was like 90, 100 people, and we were all just flabbergasted because we weren't sure anyone was gonna show up to this party. That was a fantastic experience to be able to pull community together that way. Most of Footsteppers hadn't really had an opportunity ever to really encounter the great outdoors and nature. So we put together a camping trip. It was held on um, someone's private property. It was a farm up in Massachusetts. We all trekked up to Massachusetts. I remember going to Walmart and purchasing my very first tent. And um, it began a annual tradition of a camping trip um, that Footsteps has run for I don't know how many years now. My ties to footsteps still remain deep and strong. Um, I've served for the last nine years as a board member. Um, I still am deeply involved in many of their programs and hope to always be. Good evening. My name is Malki Schwartz and I am the founder of Footsteps. It is my special honor to present the Footsteps Trailblazer Award to my friend, Adina Cadden. Adina's words speak to her bravery, compassion, wisdom, and the leadership that she took on the day that we met and continues to exemplify today. Adina has served on the board of directors of Footsteps for nine years, always representing our community and making sure that the needs of our members are at the center of each and every decision that the organization makes and that the organization's growth is reflected in the growth of the Footsteps community and never jeopardizes the personal connection that we offer in our programs and services. That sense of family is never diminished. Adina, like so many brave Footsteps members, you shared your story and experiences with others. And then something quite extraordinary happened when others shared their story, their triumphs, and fears with you. Your responses have a unique way of providing Footsteps members with comfort and the reassurance that they're not alone. You have walked alongside so many of us without judgment and with remarkable empathy. Your commitment to leading a self-determined life has guided others as they blaze their own trails and has helped blaze trails on behalf of the Footsteps community as a whole. Adina, it is my honor to present to you this beautiful piece of work 
from artist Sarah Clark, also a footstepper, so aptly entitled, Our Fellow Traveler, Our Trailblazer, We Are So Grateful and Wow. This award recognizes your incredible contributions to the Footsteps community. You are a gem to Footsteps, a shining voice of reason and compassion. Thank you so much, Malki and Footsteps. Um, this is beautiful and I'm so honored to receive it from a, especially since it was made by a fellow Footstepper. Malki, you saved my life about 16 years ago that day in Washington Square Park and I am forever, forever grateful to both you and the Full Footsteps community. I hope to remain involved for a very long time, to 16 more years. The greatest gift Footsteps has received. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We are here, happy to be here to support Footsteps Gala. And uh, I've heard about footsteps from various people, my friend Darcy Pico, and I have just heard about it because I love organizations that support, never mind, Gideon, I have to start over again. Why? Why? Don't start over. No, do start. I love footsteps. You've already said because, that. Okay, but I'm going to say it again. I love footsteps because I grew up believing that the major, the major instruction that you get as a Jewish person is tikkun, tikkun olam, to heal the world. Am I saying it right? No, you're gonna correct me, go ahead. No, I'm a Southern California Jew, he is a Chicago Jew. That means that I'm practically not Jewish and he's practically Orthodox, but even so, this organization, who does it support? So this is an organization that supports individuals that can no longer live in ultra-Orthodox Jewish environments that have very strict rules, so they have to leave. They have to leave the flock, their and, family. Yeah. And they have often lived, I was shocked to find out that in a lot of ultra-Orthodox communities, kids are not allowed to learn English until they're in high school. They speak Yiddish. They, they live a very circumscri circumscribed life. I believe anybody should have the freedom to find out who they genuinely are. And I love that there's an organization like Footsteps, who since 2003 gives people a way of finding other people in the same circumstances, helps them legally, helps them with jobs, helps them with education, helps them get custody of their children. It's a complete support group for those that want to discover what being Jewish means to them, as opposed to having it imposed. And so this is to give people true freedom. And it's very painful at times because as Catherine said, sometimes the children are separated because community leaders or various systems feel that it's best if the children are not going with the mother or the father who need to break away. And then families are broken up. And it doesn't need to be that way. We're just an organization, to my understanding, Footsteps, that supports those. We're not trying to change, you know, people, you know, the way they do the whole thing, but simply to support those who need freedom and a new beginning, just like a refugee. They're refugees from their own families. And in our family, we have one of our mantras is an E.E. E. Cummings poem. And I think it applies mm. to the situation, don't you? Yeah, you and want to it say it or do you want me to? To be yourself <coughs> in a world that is doing its best. You, you messed it up. To be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing, doing its, its best, best night, night and, and day, day to make, make you, you everybody, everybody else, else means to, to fight, fight the hardest, hardest battle, battle which any human, human being, being can, can fight and, and never stop fighting. Right. Support footsteps. Please. It gives freedom and life. And love. And tikkun olam to repair their world so that it's a complete world for them. And everybody's life is important. And to listen and respect the individual fingerprint of each soul on this planet Amen. is our job. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for, footsteps. Thank you for listening, most important to my wife and a little bit to me. Hi everyone, my name is Jake Frankel. I'm here to give you a little background about myself, about footsteps, my journey, 
and how I got to be where I am today. Footsteps is an organization that helps people claim their lives. Growing up in a community the way I did, where choice is stolen from you. Uniqueness doesn't exist. Everybody is the same. As I was growing up, I started searching for help. And it didn't take long to recognize that that won't be possible in the community. So taking steps meant really going out of my comfort zone, like completely. I was so deep in the community in a way that I couldn't even visualize how else my life could look like. So I've had to take such huge steps, like starting from scratch, learning English. I had, I needed to learn what an essay means, what a thesis means, what math, the science, or basic history, biology, all of those things didn't exist in my vocabulary. And years later, now about 10 years later, since I started this whole new journey, I'm in a place where I'm about to get my associate's degree in school. And Footsteps was definitely a huge help for me to get to this point. Footsteps offer community. We do a lot of programs, a lot of groups that people can connect, share, see themselves noticing that they're not alone. That's one of the big things. See that you're not alone. See that you're taking steps and you have support. People often ask, what is OTD? It stands for of the derech. Derech means path. You're on this path and that's how you go. You know what is gonna, you're going to do tomorrow. You know what you're going to do Saturday. You know what you're going to do next holiday. Your path is exactly written down for you. And it's not anything for you to even have space to think about how do I want it to look like. And making choices is basically what means of the path, of the derech. Taking life in your own hands and opening up yourself for a bigger life. Today, I'm in school full-time and work part-time at Footsteps. So Footsteps a year ago opened up this um, new program called the Warm Line. So we call it the Warm Line because this is a line where people will find warmth, will find connection, will feel held, will feel supported. It takes someone who has lived these experiences to understand sometimes what they go through. That's my journey, and that's what I'm heading, and that's my focus. This warm line has been a huge benefit to the community. And today, I'm starting to offer conscious movement dancing. Conscious movement dancing is something that helps people to get in touch with their own journey. They get in touch with what's going on in their bodies. And with movement, it opens up to new things. We can have hobbies, we can have fun. And Footsteps helps you, encourages you to take steps and make choices in life. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lonnie Santo, CEO of Footsteps. Jake and Adina are just two of 2,000 resilient and courageous Footsteps members who are part of a global movement of tens of thousands of people who've chosen to leave ultra-Orthodoxy in pursuit of self-determined lives. When they take the leap, together we are their safety net. We would not be able to affirm and support these inspiring individuals without you. And so I want to express my gratitude to all of you who've joined us here tonight from longtime partners, including our board leadership and our honorees, Devra, Ellie, Adina, and to those of you who are learning about us for the first time. I so wish we could be together tonight in person, but I guess this is just gonna have to do and I'll see your smiling faces on the other side. It goes without saying that this has been an extremely difficult year 
for those seeking to forge their own paths out of insular communities. We've heard from so many people who've had to shelter in place in homes when they had to, had to hide their questions and their doubts in homes that were quite frankly, far from shelter. <clears throat> Picture this, for example, it's March, 2020. You're the oldest of 12 siblings living in a cramped Williamsburg apartment. You finally mustered up that courage to make the first brave call to footsteps because you know that this life just isn't for working for you yet. You are stopped in your tracks by a global pandemic. Or it's September 2020. You finally started college, but the odd jobs you've depended on have disappeared and you can't pay your own way anymore. And you make that agonizing decision that you're gonna need to drop out and move back in with your parents, the very people who predicted you'd fail. I just wanna take a moment to compare that to those of you who've welcomed your adult children into your homes over the past years, the past year, that is. And I imagine you've done so with open arms and with so much love. One more example for you. It's January, 2021. You're the mother of six living in Muncie and you're so desperate to connect to your weekly footstep support group, but you're unable to sneak out to your secret smartphone in your car because it's buried under two feet of snow. These are all very real scenarios our members face this year. And it's because of you that we were able to respond to them. And it's because of you that we were able to respond to hundreds more members who reached out to us this year. Because of your help, we were able to allocate over a quarter of a million dollars to 140 individuals in crisis funding to help them out of make or break situations. That's a tenfold increase over last year. We responded to 500 more calls for mental health support this year over last year, and we achieved three precedent setting custody cases. These cases not only impact individual lives, but can change an entire system. One that all too often presents parents with a false and impossible choice, either stay silent and be stifled or be true to yourself and risk losing, not just your family, not just your community, but even your children. To make all this happen, our staff has been working tirelessly, I say tirelessly navigating, all while navigating their own complex COVID realities. And we appreciate them so much. I hope you're putting into that chat that appreciation for them. And even as COVID restrictions left for some, the road to freedom for our members will be long and bumpy. You see more and more people will be coming our way this year as the world hits reset. For those who've, hold, who've been holding back from initiating their journeys to freedom can no longer wait. We need to be there to welcome them and to champion them. And so now we're gonna turn back to you. For those, we are so, so grateful for all you've done. And for those who are here as guests or those who are inspired to give more, we're working to raise an additional $50,000 here tonight to meet the dramatically increasing needs of our community. Here's how you could text to give. You can text the word, as Loser told you before, footsteps to 44321. That's footsteps to 44321. We and footsteppers need you now more than ever. Thank you. And back over to you, loser. Thank you, Lonnie. Please, everyone, take your time. We understand that larger numbers take longer to write, and we're here for you. And as a reminder, 
If you're giving in shekels, we're using the exchange rate of biblical times. What can I say? As they say, when in Rome, do as they do on the Upper East Side. Okay, I just got word that we have nearly reached our goal. We're at $20,000 and just have 30000 to go. Pocket change. Buy nila buy nila, as they say. So please, everyone, time to sell those Bitcoins and make the world a better place, all right? Thank you, everyone, so much. And now, <clears throat> it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you two footsteppers who I've known for a very, very long time. Malky Goldman and Joseph Horowitz. Malki and Yosef are my very dear friends and fellow artists and fellow footsteppers. I was only given one minute to introduce both of them. I'm assuming it's because they knew I could heap praise and superlatives at them for an hour, probably. So naturally, they said, well, you have a minute. And now that minute is up. Please welcome Malki Goldman and Yosef Horowitz. Thank you, loser. Good evening, everyone. I am Malki Goldman. I'm Yosef Horowitz. Uh, we are married and we actually met at Footsteps. Yeah, we met at a Footsteps event. And we're so happy to be part of tonight's event and together introduce you to our next honoree, Ellie Gordis. Ellie and I actually met at Footsteps. Um, we joined Footsteps at the same time, but we came in from different doors. Ellie came in as a, as a supporter, a mentor, and a board member, and I came in as a, as a member. Um, I first met Ellie, I believe, in 2011 at an event he hosted in his house to raise awareness about footsteps, and I was invited to be a speaker. And it was one of the first times that I was talking publicly about my story, and I remember I was sharing pretty dark secrets <laughs> about, you know, what I've gone through and also where I was at the moment and where I wanted to be. Uh, but it's not about the first time that I want you to know about what Ellie did. It's about the second time. Second time I met Ellie, he remembered me and it felt like we spoke yesterday. He, he knew my name. He knew what I was up to. He asked me about this job that I had applied to and how it was going. And he didn't ask me about my past. It might not seem big to you, but to me, it was a big deal. And he seemed genuinely interested and, and happy for me and excited and proud. Thank you, Ali. I want to add that um, I feel honored to think back to how Ali and I came to Footsteps around the same time. You know, he, he came as a board member, I as a member, and now a decade later, um, as Ellie is leaving the board, I'm grateful and fortunate to be joining the Footsteps Board uh, of Directors. And, you know, everything I know about Ellie and the more I learn about Ellie, um, the, the more I know these are going to be really tough shoes to fill. Um, Ellie is one of the people who helped build this organization uh, through his dedication to the OTD community, uh, like they were his own family, his unique warmth and ability to connect uh, people. He's introduced hundreds of people over the years to Footsteps, people who are now also committed to this community. So as I take on this role, I really hope to emulate Ellie's qualities. Confident, thoughtful, wise, uh, welcoming and kind. Um, someone who is uh, equally willing and comfortable hopping on a train to join Lani in a meeting as he was with coming to the Footsteps Winter Party to dance along with us members. So Ellie, thank you so much for being a pillar of our community. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Yosef and Malki, for that warm introduction. And thank you all for being here this evening and for supporting Footsteps. I first learned about this wonderful organization after reading Hella Winston's book, Unchosen, The Hidden Lives of Hasidic Rebels. I was so moved by Malki Schwartz's story that I called her up and met her for breakfast. 
That was the start of my 10 year relationship with Footsteps. Then and now, I feel a deep connection to the community served by this incredible organization. American Jews who are trapped in a world that they do not have the tools to escape. I often think of how close I came to being in their shoes. We share history, heritage, the words of a single Torah, but their ancestors went one way and mine another. When I first got involved in Footsteps, I saw it as my personal mission to enlighten Footsteppers about a different way to practice Judaism, what I saw as a kinder and gentler religion. My wife, Ava, and I started inviting members to our home in an effort to show them that you can celebrate Shabbat and still participate in the secular world. But I soon realized that this was not the type of help that was needed. Footsteps members do not want options and suggestions for how to practice Judaism. They need tools so that they can exercise the most basic human right, the right to choose their own destiny. And that is where Footsteps is so effective, by listening to their members, focusing on their specific needs, and making sure they are fulfilled, Footsteps has literally saved hundreds of lives. In the past 10 years, I have been fortunate to witness the incredible growth in the organization due to a visionary board and tremendous leaders. Footsteps has changed so much over the last decade, we now provide a wide and holistic range of services to an ever-growing population. And I have to give credit to my good friend and fellow honoree, Deborah Fine, whose leadership of the board and partnership with Lonnie over the last eight years has taken this organization to the next level. And it brings me particular joy to see the people I met in my early days at Footsteps, like Yosef and Malki, now taking their seat at the board table. The leadership of our board and support of our community was particularly important during this past year as Footsteps was stress tested through the COVID crisis. We heard from so many people who felt stuck in their ultra Orthodox communities, who felt the fear and threat of getting sick and who felt a loss of faith in their communal leadership. And they needed our help now more than ever. As I have realized throughout my involvement with Footsteps, if we do not help these people in need, who will? So I wanna thank each and every person who has supported us and has seen us through this crisis and all the people who donated tonight and in honor of new chapters, you're helping us meet this moment. You're helping us meet these individuals where they are. Thank you so much for this honor. The honor has been all mine. All right. By the way, we are actually really live. So I actually know how much we raised. And uh, no, I didn't change my shirt. This is live. Okay, folks, we are so close. They're saying it's 7,000 to go. This is amazing. Thank you guys so much for caring about our community. It means a lot to me personally. Now, I just don't know what else to say, except thank you all so much to each and every person who gave. We know during this last year, many of you were also stretched to your limits, including financially. And we are so touched that you dug deep to support us. On behalf of Footsteps' 900 plus members, thank you. Thank you for caring about our community. Your help, your help makes stories like mine possible. And there will be many more stories and uh, many new chapters because of you tonight. So before I go, I'd like to thank Lani for her leadership of Footsteps through this difficult time. But if you know anything about Footsteps, you know that there's no easy time to lead it. And Lani has been doing that this whole time. Thank you all for your generous financial and moral support. And if there's anything I want you to remember from tonight, it's me. So thank you for that. Good night. Hey, listen, it's a great organization. Thanks for being here tonight. Support it and do what I did this afternoon. Lay down on the couch and before you take a nap, have your wife read to you some of the links about footsteps. They're deep, complicated, fascinating stories about fascinating, wonderful people. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving generously. You are doing a mitzvah. Yeah. Laura McCarthy's piece from what? The New Yorker. That's what I read to okay, you. Okay, we're done. We're done. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> We are home.